much later in the in the in the Jewish, in the in the Pasha, what the Ramban says that Midian was close to it was like sort of a neighboring Medina near Sichon Vo'eg. And he wants to say that when they conquered Sichon Vo'eg, it could be they conquered Midian also. But it's interesting that the River Ashab differs with that. The River Ashab writes in, a, in his famous Maimon that it's not much more like that, Me'apsukim. That's what he writes. It ain't much more, it's very interesting that, that he doesn't quite uh, accept the, the shit of the Ramban. Anyway, whatever. It comes out of the that the Yidden didn't go into the war with Midian to conquer their land. They just went in there and they came back out. They burnt the whole place up. Yeah, they put the cities to fire and they destroyed people and everything. They destroyed the whole room. But they didn't stay there in Eretz Midian. They didn't conquer it. It didn't become part of, of Yidden's, uh, they had it called wardrobe. It just remained a country which they had uh, smitten and they got and they came out. So there were this Deutsch beer. What was all in there? But you know, what sort of war was there? It, it didn't seem to have any other aim. Usually, what war had. So first of all, there's a war that you have to conquer Eretz Yisrael. Then there's a war afterwards brought down in the Rambam, other great poskim. That afterwards, once you finish conquering Eretz Yisrael, if the king of Yisrael and the Sanhedrin decide to conquer some other area outside of Eretz Yisrael, then you can do that, and then you conquer it in order to take it over. It becomes part of Eretz Yisrael. It can even become Chayav in, in uh, Trumas and Mises, or, or at least in certain of the Mount um, Meshkahuna Vachulu, it can become Chayav through being taken over by because uh, uh, the king of Yidden, being as he's the representative of the whole public and the, and the Sanhedrin, they take over that area, then they've conquered that area and it's become part of Israel. But with Midian, it wasn't like that. About Mashiach and Sichon Vo'oi, it did become part of Eretz Yisrael. It became what we call Eber Hayadik. But it became part of the Kedush. Albeit not the same Kedush as Yerushalayim, but it became part of the Kedush of Eretz Yisrael. About Midian, if he said, what were they doing with this Midian? What, what, what this, this whole war against Midian was just a Nekoma. It was a vengeance war purely, and Moshe Rabbeinu uh, gives over, ultimately, that it, it, it's, the, it, it's the revenge of the uh, Yudke Volke of the Shemavayim. The Abish, to use the expression to him, that was also the, the vengeance of the Bnei Yisra. And uh, that's, uh, that's interesting. And so this point is made very, very amazingly by the Rabbeinu Bechaya in a much later piece uh, towards the end of his peers on this week's Pasha, but the Rabbeinu B'chayi says that uh, when they conquered Sichin Vo'oig, we don't find that they had to kasher all the Kalim that, that they wanted to use that took care of. Here by Midian, there's a whole huge portion of this week's Pasha about how they have to kasher all the Kalim that they took. And how you can kasher them all the laws. Uh, I mean, you guys are learning here and there, you know, so we learn from Uli Midian, we learned quite a lot of the halachas of here and there. So the, so the Rabbeinu B'chai says, why here? Yes, and over there by Sikhan Voy, we don't find such a thing. So he says a very amazing thing. He said, because when the Yidden went into Sikhan Voy, then they had a din, a very special din. It's a very amazing halacha, but the Gemara brings it in the sect of Chuli. That when Yidden went into Eretz Yisrael, and the army of the Yidden went into Eretz Yisrael to conquer Eretz Yisrael, that until they'd conquered the whole of Eretz Yisrael, whenever they made a war against the Shiva Amamim that were in Eretz Yisrael, they, they could eat if they wanted. They could eat even Trayvon. They could eat out of the Kedim of the Goyim. They could eat anything they wanted because soldiers who are in a war and need to have uh, sustenance can't wait around until everything is cashed until they find kosher. You don't find kosher with the whole uh, Rikha Sainan. Yet if it is a special halacha, it's an amazing din. Rambam brings it down in Hulus <coughs> Malachim, that this, the Chalutei Tzava are allowed to eat anything until they finish the particular war. Once they finish that war, then they've got to back, go back to eating kosher. So, well, so, so therefore, he brings a right that Rabbeinu B'chayi, that since Sichon Vo'i becomes later part of Eretz Yisrael, it becomes what we call Eiva Yadin, and they're over there while they're actually fighting, and, what, and once they'd even finished, 
they were fighting, they didn't have to, to how do you call it, uh, be mucked about uh, cutting the kalim and all things, because it was becoming part of Eretz Israel. And everyone's got this din that they can eat anything until they've completed the whole conquering of Eretz Israel. And the whole conquering wasn't going to be finished until they went over into, uh, down to Eretz Israel, Kipshute. My understanding is by Midian, he said, Midian, they, they, they didn't conquer. So therefore, there wasn't a war of conquering there. So this whole aloha that the soldiers could just eat anything didn't apply. And therefore, they had to cash everything. By Midian, they had to cash everything. Because it was like a, a how do you call it, a, a spiritual war. It didn't have anything to do with the normal conquering of Eretz Because well. it's not part of Eretz so It's not even close to Eretz so it, 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 It's not even understood what they were really doing in conquering Midian. What, what's, what's the whole thing? So, from that we have to understand that there must be something very remarkable and very profound in this whole concept of nekoma, a, a, a special type of, of like uh, vengeance and taking revenge against Midian. And like Rashi said, the, the Midianites came in, like as a world, Lishma. <laughs> they, they didn't have any fight with him, but they came in to, to go against the Eden in the same way. It has to be a special elevated type of, uh, uh, how do you call it, vengeance against this whole concept of what Midian, Midian is and what they represent. And there's a very amazing uh, r uh, r view from the Rebbe, Mamish Pili Plus, the Rebbe's got a whole seat here. There's a, a Rambam, not far from where we are now, also at the end of Hilche Shmita, there's a Rambam and a Raiva, the Raiva asks a cash on the Rambam about this whole Indian of uh, a king being able to conquer areas and then the Levim can have a part of it and everything. And then the Ravid asks a question for Midian. Uh, the the Ravid seems to be learning that Midian was a war for conquering. But if we learn like, the Ram, uh, like we're learning now, that it wasn't a war of conquering, then the, how do you call it, the Levim didn't have to have, and they didn't for most of them, didn't have a, a part. And with that, the Rebbe answers in the most amazing way of the Rambam. <laughs> it's a very amazing. Anyway, that's just by the way, that's a, it's, Ruben, it's absolutely mind-boggling. Reuben and God, didn't they move into uh, Midian? Reuben and God, Shevet Reuben and God, didn't they move Reuben and God was part of Eretz Israel. That became later Kedusha's Eva Hayat. That's part of Eretz Israel. B'nai Gad and B'nai Reuben, they conquered, and they had the Midian. din of Harut Tzavah, Nilchomim al Eretz So what's the difference between that and Sichon and Oik? They got a different din. The, uh, the, uh, the Eretz Sichon and Oik became part of Eretz Israel. And Midian did it? That's what's called uh, Eva Yad. It's a Kedusha's right. Eva Yad. And but Midian part is not of part of anything. Wants, uh, Midian's not anything. Midian doesn't belong to them. They're at soil. Have you ever heard of Eretz Midian? But Reuben and God moved there. Reuben and God had to do with Sichon Vo'e, not with Midian. Oh, they didn't have to do with Midian, Klau Klau. Uh -huh. Midian was Klau Yisrael. We just learned that every tribe has to give a thousand people. And the whole Klal Yisrael went out against Midian. Of uh, the Eretz Sichem Voig was only roof of a guide than those people. Uh, well, it was also it was also conquered by other parts of of Yidden, but it was given later to roof of a guide of a roof, and it was taken over. It's written that the Yidden sat. It's written such a at the end of Pasha uh, Bola that the Yidden sat in those countries. You follow? In Midian, they didn't sit. They just went in and they came out. Good. Okay, what's the fee say? Ask yourself the question, what's this whole thing? Some sort of joke? Okay, so what I'm going to do, we're, we're running out of time, so what I'm going to do is just um, give a, a brief description of how in some of the great, or certain great foreign that I saw in the uh, and the Torah Sachsidus of the great Polish Sachsidus, and then later to see what it's like in Torah Sachsidus Chabad, the whole thing. And that is, that, uh, before we begin, the, the, like the final invasion, the final <laughs> uh, attack, is uh, we have to examine what did, the, what did the Midianites, what were they after, mm -hmm. the Puyol Mamish, in the way it's described in the Torah. They 
they were mafkia their own daughters to bring about immorality <coughs> in a way to tempt Yidin from the laws of the Torah into uh, Arayas, into Gilead Arayas. So that's a, a, a very terrible uh, Indian. Of a, it's, a, it's a very common weakness in human beings that they fall into that Indian. It's even from you know, the, the, the whole Indian of women and the Gansar it's a, it's a it's a big weakness in the human being. So they caught on to that the Midianites hit at that, which means that there must be some Indian in the Midianites which indicates or somehow links with that. So therefore, I'm just quoting now a certain safer who also brings certain others for him from the great Persian. And they say that we find a, a very interesting, right at the beginning of Pirachiovis, we find a very interesting thing that right near the beginning, it's written that um, um, Tignus Isuke, uh, the whole thing he says, that uh, you have to be avodim, amashamshim mesarav, shaloy almanas le kabul pras. You have to be like servants, that you're serving the king or, your, or the master, but not to get a reward. You're not, you're not looking for a reward. That, that shouldn't be the main thing. If you do get a reward, no matter who I know, but that's not what you're looking for. And then there's another girsa, which is brought down, and some of the great Mephoshim, bring it down, uh, it's written there, uh, not that you, you, you should serve the master, not only not in order to get a, a, a reward, which means that maybe you might get a reward, but there's a gift which says you should serve the rough in order not to get a reward. <laughs> that the decision should be where there's no reward at all. <laughs> so it's brought down in, in history, it's brought down by some of the great Mephoshim that certain people who learned that Mishnah from Antignus Ben Sukhe, they said it's too much for Nike. <laughs> and there was a whole bunch, a group of people called Beitusim, but they, they had a leader called Beitus. He, he got into that Mishnah, he said, that's not fair, what's that? The person's gonna serve Hashem his whole life and he's gonna get a reward, what? what's it does? And if they turned against the Tereshul, there was a whole miser, a gansar, a in the history of the Mephoshim, but again, to that uh, Mishnah. Anyway, just what it means is that there's a way of serving Hashem where you do respect a reward or you might even really expect a reward. It's just that you try to be as disinterested as you can. And then there's another way where you do everything only for the sake of Hashem, only to bring Nachas Ruth to the Rebishtah. But that's brought down in some of our Barichas. And this week's Pasha, by the way, in Pasha Matas, the Rebbe talks about the Ebed Pasha. But the whole thing is only to bring our nachas ruah, the Kodesh Baruch or to do his will just purely because, well, not, not that you have any other Indian was there, other than the fact that it's his will. Zarko. So he wants to say that's the difference between Nikmas B'nai Yisrael and Nikmas Hashem. That there had to be a blow against these people because the whole Indian of Midian is to mix in your own, your own material. And the whole concept of Midian is a concern with the soul. And if you do your mitzvahs, if you learn to and you give yourself away to Hashem, but you do it through yourself. First of all, you want kilo, everything should be good and you should have, have what they call beauty and fulfillment and all these things. <laughs> well, it not right, in a way. But you want all that and then, you know, you're prepared to give yourself away for Hashem and everything. But, you know, it's all part of the picture that there'll be this great self-fulfillment as well. <coughs> a lady can become a bit disinterested and you don't put so much emphasis on it. Oh, it's there. It's part of your... And then as we see in some of all in this week's Pasha, the Ebed uh, Poshet, but later the Rebbe makes him for a very big person, even though he's, he calls him the Ebed Poshet. He's a person that he doesn't... <laughs> he doesn't think about anything. All he knows is that there's a shame and you've got to do his will. And that's it, you just do what Hashem wants, you don't care about anything, it doesn't matter what's going to happen, you know, what's going to be good for you, in Gashmias or not, or whatever's going to be, in Ruchnias, was it not Zion? Only Rots and Hashem, go away. So he said, that's the two different levels of Nikmas Bnei Yisrael. Nikmas Bnei Yisrael, the vengeance of the Yidden, is where the Yidden feel that they were, you know, they have a certain status, and they have a certain union in the way to Hashem. The Midianites, pulled them down from that. And there was a very interesting thing here that's written 
Yeshud has written, you have a Yu al Midion. They should be on top of Midion. Yeah, Losa is Nikmas Hashem of Midian. You have to be on top of Midian. So the Urachim Kodesh being up has written others for him. Uh, the, if you if you are into Kedusha, then you are above. And could, all of you in your name are a pawn. But if you do an Avera, you do something not good, then y- y- your head falls. In other words, your eyes turn downwards, and gradually <coughs> you you sort of fall away from connection with Kedusha, just having done not a good thing. In other words, you become down. And the Urachim Kodesh says Kipshute, you become like a a slipper, you know, you sort of drop, and your head drops, and everything drops, and you're not on top of things. You know, you sort of always, oh, wow, that's a, uh, uh, you know, I didn't work out this before. Why didn't I think more carefully? Why didn't I do this? Why didn't I? Uh, so it's a lot of slipper right? But he said, if you're if you're into kedusha, doing a shem's book, then you're al medium. You're on top of it. And that was written in the Bodhisattva Rav. So I looked it up in the newspaper just now before I came. In. He says bull. The same thing. He said, you've got to be above. And the way of being above is to be in the Kedusha yeah, for the sake of Rots and Hashem. The only way, he says, that the Nikmas B'nai Yisrael, where you feel that the Yidin, you know, they were affected by this whole thing and they need someone or another to come back. He said, Nikmas Hashem, the Nikoma, the, uh, the vengeance of Hashem, where you don't care about anything, you don't know anything, all you know is just Rots and Hashem, and that's why you're in it. And you're not pure for that sake. And he says, however, it's funny, it's funny, it's, uh, it's like a schmack that. What's, uh, what's the bridge between the two? How do you get from that up to that? He said, that's the Emerson Bechira. That's where Bechira <coughs> choice really comes in. Because a lot of our choices we make on a, slow, a slightly lower level are not genuine choices. Because we, you know, we could be expected to make that choice. Why shouldn't a person want a better life? Why shouldn't he want a more elevated life? Why shouldn't he want spirituality? Uh, so to a certain extent, you're going into that thing not with genuine choice. You're going because it's, it's good for you. Yeah, this is a benefit for you. But he said, to go up into genuine disinterestedness and you give it away purely for the sake of Hashem, you've moved like from that Madragida. He said, that's called Bechem. That's the embassy. That's the embassy in your And yeah, therefore, Moshe Rabbeinu wanted to lift up everybody to that level and therefore, uh, he only sent, and that's what Rashi said. Why was it only so few people that he actually sent? Because he sent the Tzadikim, as they said, Rashi, and it's brought down in Sfarim, the word Rashi means he sent the Tzadikim. He meant the people that hadn't got mixed with Midian. Those who hadn't become mixed, and there are Chaim, because it must be also wider. He said, in a war like that, you need people that are sort of out of it. You know, people who are clean, and they meet only the Indian. And therefore, Moshe Rabbeinu sent these people. So that's a certain... Great Swarim. I must but that's the difference between Nikmas Bana Yisrael and Nikmas and Nikmas Sasha. There comes along um, the Rebbe in that very famous the Rebbe Rashad, in that very famous Maimah from Hei Chot from Yidchem, and he introduces a, a whole amazing new concept. What it's become like uh, almost legendary in the annals of Hasidus Chabad. It's a very famous. Uh, and he says that Midian, the clipper, <coughs> the clipper of Midian is what we call uh, pointless hatred. How do you call it? Sinas, sinas chit. And we, well, we know very well from the Gemara Masekta Yuma that what caused the destruction of the second temple? We have a sinas chinam, pointless, yeah. pointless hatred. So the Rebbe goes to town over there and he says, you know, first of all, how do we know that Midian had got nothing to do with that? They said to the word Midian is from the word Madoin. What Madoin in Russian Kurdish means a squabble or, a, you know, inability to get together and to agree about something. That's called a Madon. Midian is like a sort of an absolute uh, nationality type of noun from the word Madon. But Madon means, uh, you know, a... Uh, Quarrel, a squabble. Uh. So he said, it's not chas for shalom that a person yeah, fights or squabbles with other people. He doesn't fight, doesn't squabble with them. And he claims that Bukhashem, he's, he's good with everybody. He said, but deep inside, 
deep, deep, as I say, tip, tip in America, as I say, a deep inside, there's an inability to get on with certain people. There's certain people you just can't, uh, you can't get it right with them, and he believes he's right and he's not prepared to, to really get on well with these people. <coughs> there's no way, and he really believes sincerely that there's something not right about that person. And he has no knowledge of what that person does. He has no knowledge of that person's Avedis Hashem. The reason why he hates him like that, says the Rebbe, because he loves himself so much that he can't possibly imagine how can there be anybody else in this world. <laughs> in other words, once again, in a very delicate way, not, not in a grub way. He doesn't walk around saying, oh, you guys just a lot of creeps, you know, and, and the whole thing. He doesn't say that. But deep, deep inside, he can't be one with this person. He's got a sort of a slight problem with him. He doesn't quite make it with him. The reason being because he really makes it with himself too much. And he's too much wrapped up in his own issues. And then he can't feel uh, another person in his real way. He can't really unite with the other person. Alamela says that a bit. That's the clip of media. And that's what the Gemara means with sinners china, because you hate him for no reason. He never did you anything. He never will do you anything. Just by being there and being what he is, he gets in your way. So the Rebbe says, how come he gets in your way? Because you're a big, you're a big yes in your own soul. And I mean, the Rebbe says that that's like the beginning of all the other tigers. And once you can't be at one with other people, then you fall. Like we use the expression, you fall down a bit, you fall down. You're not out, you're not on top of it. And I I would like to suggest that that's why the millions got into Papoyal Mamish, they got involved with this whole business with the immorality and everything, with the whole sort of craze with that particular union, which is very uh, powerful pull on people, because they're really all wrapped up in themselves. They, they, they think, first of all, a zir. I think first of all himself. I said, well, "Listen, it's me. I'm an important entity. I, you know, I need everything. Ever since I need everything, everything's got to be for me. You know, and, uh, <laughs> you know? and therefore he's drawn into that particular desire because that's a pull on the normal, what you might call um, desire screen of a person. And since he believes that his desires are very important, but he's a very important entity, he would never tell anybody that." He would never go around saying, listen, don't you all agree I'm very important? But deep, deep inside, that's what he thinks. As they bring to Rabbi Rashad, we can suggest that that's the fall into what later becomes yeah, the pashtas of what Midian does. In other words, if you can't have Avas Yisrael, you can't really be one with your own <coughs> comrades, and you can't really feel, and you can't really be happy in the fact that they're better than you. If somebody's better than you, then you should be happy. You shouldn't say, oh, no, he's not. The river shot brings it. That sometimes you look at a person and you know that he's got a mile in. And you know he's a person with a lot of value. And you, all of a sudden you just say to your friend, oh, no. <laughs> Without realizing, you just make a little sort of a, a remark and you play him down. Because you don't want people to, to be too impressed by he, what you know. And you know the truth that he's got a mile in. But you don't want to make too much of it because you're going to feel with your monopoly. If, it, if he'll really be known for what is genuine, and you know generally what the mile is, but it'll interfere with your monopoly, yeah, therefore you tend to play it down. But this is, uh, this is uh, the beer of what the Rebbe says is the clipper of media. That's the clipper of media. And therefore the Rebbe Hashab says that that is why there was this whole conceptual thing of the Nekoma of the Shemavaya against media. It didn't have to do with conquering the land. It didn't have to do with anything. It had just to get rid of the clipper of Midian and to, to break it and to sort of push it down that there shouldn't exist the clipper of Midian. And that's why Moshe Rabbeinu said, Nikmas Hashem, the Yud Kei Havaya Laken, Havaya Chod. That the Shem Havaya indicates oneness, indicates actus. So there has to be, just like there has to be oneness in the whole Bria, there's got to be oneness amongst Yidin themselves. And on the contrary, the clee to be mamshik, the actus in the Bria, is the actus amongst ourselves, the, the oneness. And that's, yeah, therefore, the, the, the coma of the Shem Havaya yeah, is to, to beat Midian, to get rid of Midian. 
But medium is this division between people and this inability to unite for no real reason. And therefore the Rebbe says, what the Rebbe, I don't want to want to tell you too long. Uh, that's what the Rebbe says. That that's what the Gemara says in Masek to Yuma, that it, it says on Duff Test that the reason for the destruction of the, of the Bayes Shani was Sinus Chino. That's what he brings. And a few lines later, much on the same Duff, the Gemara says that because it's not revealed to us what was the real sin in Bayes Shani, and therefore we have, it's not revealed to us the uh, uh, you know, the case, we're, we're all the time expecting it, but it's sort of real clearly to us. Okay, Mashiach and Bayes Rishon, it was 70 years, and they knew that after 70 years, that's what happened. After 70 years, they came back. But here we don't know. So uh, everybody said, wait a minute, he just said two lines back that it was Sinus Kingdom. Now you said, we don't know what it is. Loin is Gala Avinon. Therefore, Loin is Gala Kita. So the Rebbe Rashab says, what does it mean, Loin is Gala Avinon? You know against Google it is, you know it's sinus chinam, but you won't even admit to yourself that you've got it. How much more so you won't admit to other people? That's what it means, it's not clear to anybody, it's not misgale. What is the problem? And therefore the goal is to slap them, slap them, slap them. One and Hashem Yishmael. I'm a male, what is the answer? Yeah, the answer is to get together and to be in a state of actors and oneness and to try and overlook Thing and be mamish one with the, uh, and therefore the, the Rebbe <coughs> stresses the whole time that Avish Yisroel is the sort of everything. And without Avish Yisroel, we don't have, we don't have, uh, and like I said last week, I think it was in the Shir Kloy, I mentioned last week, that the Vedidja was said, it's written by Avish Yisroel, we all have to l'ra'echa komoicha ani Hashem. That if you really love the other person, then Hashem says, oh, Two people love one another like that. I want to be a monster. Hashem comes along and he, he, he's with you. In other words, the way to be mamshi, gile ala kruz, and the way to bring ala kruz, actors, you know, to be one, and to understand one another, and to appreciate one another. And if you see that somebody's trying to you know, do something, it could be, you know, he's got these little faults and he didn't do it, you know, the favor in the way you really would have wanted it and everything. But you have to, you have to, you know, how do you call it, uh, feel love for him, that at least he took the trouble to try and help you because <laughs> he cares. And you have to realize that if he cares, that you know, that's the greatest thing that can possibly be. And to care about another person, that's the greatest thing that could possibly be. And if, uh, if Chas Rishomim, you don't have that, then you fall into other types of people. And you can fall into who knows what, they can be slept in the you know, other type of, that's the, the ultimately speaking what it, what it happened. And therefore, so the Abel, this is special in the common. It was a very special war. It was just purely to blot out a certain clipper from the world, and nothing to do with uh, territorial, and nothing to do with anything. And therefore, the Levim, the Rebbe says in this famous Sikha, therefore, even the Levim had to go. But normally, the Levim, they're all in this uh, service in the Migdosh, uh, or in the Mishka. They don't have to go to war. They're, they're gotten, oh, but this is a general war which is so important. Yeah, to blotting out the ultimate clipper which can ruin the whole Yiddish guy. Everybody, everybody has to go, even shortly. But I mean, what can I tell you guys? This was a sheer, uh, tonight's only the ninth day, it's only Rosh Chodesh Av. Baruch Hashem, the Rebbe's Mo'ira, we should learn things about the, you know, about the Mikdash and about the, well, we should have a little class with um, with the you would just be kind of to give you a class about that. So I decided I'd try and learn something that's got to do with the etz of disease called gullus. You know, <laughs> it's a disease. The gullus is a disease. And, and the Rebbe says that's what it is. And here, hidden in this whole, you know, uh, it's just too amazing to go into the whole thing in such in such a brief time. There's so much that could be said about it. This is the whole in it. And the whole story of the rebuilding of the Jewish people in a way that will be able to be Makabal the Gula straight away. And we'll be able to build the the base of Mikdash, take of me out mummy. And we see the Rahman and the Klan the the the, the hell of the Est is so terrible. <coughs> and uh Rahman and Islam. I don't wanna say things which are not, you know, cost on but you know there's a whole big fuss later they wanna be my the guys see Shiva Bokhim, they're going to do this and they're going to do that, they're going to say, it's forbidden. 
And so then once, uh, who knows what that, that can bring. In the middle, we, what can we do? How can we get rid of all this terrible situation, you know, which is scholars? And what, unfortunately, these crazy fools are just playing into it. Yeah, so the only thing we can do is we have to strengthen ourselves with the beautiful eclipse medium. And it first of all begins at home. Don't be so self-centered. <laughs> That's the first thing. <coughs> Don't think about yourself only. Yeah, try to think about the other person. Try to think about Hashem. And, try to, uh, and that was, uh, it's, one of, it's about the third or fourth Mishnah in the first Perak of Pirhi Ovi. It's the same as one of the really big basic principles. And the interesting enough, the Mishnah before that, the Mishnah before that says, Hamidu Talmidim Harvi. They should bring a lot of Talmidim, many Talmidim. So the Rebbe wrote that to me. I, have, I had a big sound from the Rebbe. The Rebbe wrote me that we have to be Mamid uh, Talmidim Harvi. So I, I sort of think to myself, you know, where, where's all the Harvi? You know, so, you know, in number, we're small. So the answer is that each Talmud is a Harvi. Each person, he is Harvi. And Hamidu Talmidim Harvi means you have to stand up yeah, each Talmud in a way that he himself would be a many. He, had to go, he, he would be a Marve. And I know we've got to do that with ourselves. We've got to, each one of us has got to stand himself up in a way that he will be Mashpia, Latifa, and other people. And it's amazing how you can do it. You don't have to walk around being a, the biggest goner in the world to do it. You know, and you don't have to have 50 uh, internet programs all over the country. But the country might, even if you just say the right thing at the right moment to people, and you show that there's such an inner being together and being linked, uh, then you have a little bit of a It doesn't look how much of a I mean, Hashem should always have taken from the ad mummy. There'll be the beetle of all the clippers. Like we say in the Yehi Rotten on Arab Pesach when you throw the comments into the fire. There's a whole amazing Yehi Rotten. It says, Yahweh Rams, call a clippers, min oil, and all the clippers will go away from the world and the Abel will burn them in the fire. <laughs> And there should be the Vizgalas, Yigalahu, Shmoyachad, Beoyam, and it'll be taken from the other Vida Gula Shlema, Omein Kain Yirot. You guys all know I love you all. Huh?